Just how would you define a Rube Goldberg invention? Well, uh, I've been called the father of automation. <laughs> uh, uh, it's one thing after another. I mean, that's really the thing. And uh, it's, a, it's, a logi it's an illogical bunch of things which are put in a logical sequence. Rube Goldberg. 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 I made a Rube Goldberg machine. A Rube Goldberg machine. It's an intentionally delightful waste of time and energy. Here's a typical example of what I mean. Ten to twenty failures and two successes. But that's that's my hypothesis. The internet, and YouTube in particular, has given a whole new life to Rube Goldberg. Watch close. You can leave it on the counter, sweetie. I'll do it. Very simple. Oh, and there it goes. Suppose there are one or two among you who think that my uh, inventions are a bit ahead of their time. All right, go on and say it. Downright screw it. Rube Goldberg, doing something simple in a very complicated way that is not necessary. It's a goofy, gadgety, glorious sight to behold. This, this goes up with a bit of a Rube Goldberg contraption. Sloppy staff work right from the beginning, especially on this bill. And this is the world's slowest Rube Goldberg. Goldberg machines. Oh, no kidding. I love it. You actually know what it is. I'm pretty surprised. Absolutely. <laughs> from this earthly scene. This machine of mine will be working on and on and on and on and on. Well, if that doesn't get you psyched up, nothing will, I don't think. Um, welcome to the first ever uh, broadcast of this uh, Rube Goldberg competition and event. Uh, my name is Mike Washburn. I'm the director of engagement for Participate. We're thrilled to be the um, streaming partner, and I am thrilled to be the host for this awesome event. Uh, beside me is Eric Leitner. Uh, down into, I guess, the, the right of your screen is the one and only Steve Isaacs. And we are thrilled to be joined by Jennifer George, who is the granddaughter of Rube Goldberg. Uh, welcome to the stream, everybody. Welcome to everybody who's watching. We have 
dozens of people watching from all over the world uh, right now, including a number of students um, watching. And we're just thrilled to have you with us to share with you what's going to be happening, uh, not just today, but over the next um, year, I guess. Um, um, we're going to be doing some really great great things. I'm going to throw it over to Jennifer to talk about why we're here a little bit and give us a little bit of background because this is really exciting. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm so excited. Uh, to This is the launch of this uh, first ever NACEF Minecraft Rube Goldberg collab, so to speak. And um, for years, I have been wanting to have to take uh, the competition, our Rube Goldberg Machine Contest, into kind of the digital realm of Minecraft. And I was lucky enough to, uh, through kind of happenstance, to meet uh, both Steve and Eric. And that was only maybe five, six months ago. And in, uh, in that time, we've managed to bring it to you here. So if you don't know what a Rube Goldberg machine is, I hope that the sizzle reel helped. Um, he was my grandfather and uh, he, uh, he was trained as an engineer. He was a cartoonist. He never actually built these machines. Um, so I think it's kind of cool that we're gonna be building them um, digitally in Minecraft. And I am gonna turn this whole thing over right now to the experts. <laughs> Steve, Eric, it's yours. Thank you so much. Um, we're really excited too. Obviously, this is the first one. And for those who are just tuning in for the first time who don't know the deal, uh, every two weeks, we're going to do these kind of mini sessions leading up to the launch of the overall Rube Goldberg Challenge, uh, focusing on different uh, simple machines along the way, because it is those simple machines all kind of chained together. Uh, into this sort of chaotic chain reaction that make a Rube Goldberg machine a Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, the delightful chaos, I guess you will. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna actually take a very brief dive uh, into the world of simple machines. And uh, today we're gonna focus on the incline plane. And as soon as we kind of go through this, uh, then a few of us are gonna take you into Minecraft and look at how we can represent some of these things in Minecraft. Uh, we're gonna show you uh, how to register your teams for this program and show you how to submit for this very first challenge that's literally taking off today, right now. Steve, anything you want to add before we go on? Uh, no, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm just so excited. Uh, you know, my students have been making Rube Goldberg machines in, you know, digitally for a while. So this is a dream come true for me as well. Um, so it was uh, a very wonderful surprise when I first, when Jennifer did first reach out and said she wanted to talk about what might be possible here. And and now this time later, here we are. So I'm super excited. I'm excited that we're gonna be launching and sharing a little bit of information about simple machines. There's an educational component here and kids are gonna be building simple machines in Minecraft or prototyping them for the next 12 weeks or so. And it's gonna be a great start to a great year. So Steve, why don't you take us through the uh, the website that we've uh, set up for um, the the event and 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 guide us through um, how how uh, people can navigate to that and and what they should be looking for. Awesome. So I'm dropping the link in as well. So basically, everything you're going to need to know about this uh, program and project is included in the NACEF, uh Rube Goldberg uh, website. Okay, so all of the rules, all of the team rules, basically you're gonna have the opportunity to work with a team of up to, I think it's four people, which up to meaning some people might choose to work alone, others will work uh, as a team. And basically over the next six weeks, and you'll see all that in here, there's gonna be the different live streams. So 66 of you are here with us today, hopefully, you and all the friends that you tell will continue to join us for these live streams where we're gonna talk about the different simple machines. Each one of those will launch an individual contest. Um, so in other words, like after today, and Eric will talk about it, there will be a contest to take what you learned today and apply it in Minecraft. And those will be submitted ultimately through Flipgrid, but it's important that you register. Right now, the website, uh, I believe has it says here, register your team, available September 16th. Last I checked, that's today. 
So right now, I think it that, should go live right after this call. Oh, it's so, going to go live right after, after this. this. So, okay. Yeah. So after this call, that's the big button you're going to want to press and get your team registered. That'll at least allow you, you know, get you all the information. This team guide is going to have, again, everything you could possibly need to know about this contest. Um, we're asking, generally speaking, that with schools that educators or, or parents are involved in registering their teams of students. Um, and there's also going to be a family division. So you'll be able to register as a family if you like, and all that. So if you're at home doing it um, outside of school, you know, and, and you're a student, you would do that with a parent involved. And um, otherwise, we're encouraging school teams. And this is a global event. So uh, we're going to see people from all over participating. And I think with that, as long as everybody can navigate to that website, you'll see everything you'll need is there. Yeah, so, and that so registration we, is the biggest component, right? So uh, we've done challenges before, and we love the the uh, admission through or submission through Flipgrid, which is fantastic. Uh, but if we don't have a registration to go with that submission, you won't be eligible to win some of the amazing prizes we're giving out literally every two weeks. So. That's right. Awesome. So I put that link in the chat again. Um, so if you uh, if you want to just click on that, you can head to the NASEF website and and register. Like Eric said, it's pretty important that you get that done so that you can fully participate and obviously win um, some pretty uh, awesome prizes. Yeah, and, and just if I could real quickly, to discuss and be a little clearer about the divisions, there's a junior division, which is ages 8 to 13, a senior division, 13 to 18, and the at-home division, which is intended for like families and people of all ages, can have adult members of their team. So this truly is, there are opportunities for everybody to get involved. That's right. So if there's multiple children in your home and some of them are in that junior age bracket and some of them are in their senior age bracket, they're best joining that family bracket because then those kids can work together. Awesome. Uh, Eric, you're going yeah. to take some time and actually teach us a little bit about what an incline plane is. I am, and it's going to be a very exciting. shallow dive. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time. We know this is only an hour. Uh, and I know for a fact we have some phenomenal physics uh, teachers uh, and engineering teachers that are joining us right now, mm -hmm. and they will call me out. I know they will. Uh, but I used to teach this stuff to kindergarten through sixth grade students, so we're going to approach it at that level. Uh, of course, we expect our middle school, our high school students, and even our elementary students to be scientists and to do more research and include some of those things when they submit their challenges to, to share what they've learned. We'd love to hear it. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, yeah, take it away. Incline plane. Incline plane. So that's our focus for this week. As we said, we're going to address a different one every time. <laughs> I'm reading these comments and I'm, I'm cracking up, so I'll try to stay focused. Uh, so we are going to talk about the incline plane today. And that's what Steve and I and, and Mike are going to model building in Minecraft for you today. And hopefully the students will get to use that uh, in their builds. So first thing, and uh, shout out to Jennifer and her team. Uh, the art that has been provided is phenomenal. Uh, we've got all these, I mean, Rube was a cartoonist and we've got cartoonists providing us with examples of these simple machines and they're, they're adorable. Um, but as you can see here, a simple machine is any of several devices with more or no moving parts that are, or fewer no moving parts, sorry, uh, that are used to modify motion uh, and force to perform work. Uh, essentially, very simply, they are simple machines that make our lives easier um, by making the amount of force or uh, the uh, duration of that force uh, change to make work easier. And here we see, well, seven examples. We're going to combine this into six. There's always that debate as to whether the wheel and the wheel and axle should go together. We're going to combine them for the sessions, of course. So uh, whichever you prefer, we're, we're with you. Don't worry. We won't, we won't split hairs on that one. Uh, of course, to understand that, we do need to know what a force is. And if we're looking at this on the most fundamental of levels, we're basically saying that a force is a push or a pull or, or some action that is causing motion um, in an object. Of course, that only occurs while that interaction is taking place. Um, the two objects no longer experience that force once the interaction stops. Uh, so all of these are going to, in some way, relay uh, or talk about how we are utilizing force in order to uh, change motion and utilizing simple machines to make that motion easier. <laughs> 
So let's talk about inclined planes, right? So an inclined plane is used to help move a heavy object up a certain height. Uh, and if you look at this photo, the first thing that probably comes to mind, and you would be 100% right, uh, is a ramp, right? So we have ramps that we utilize all the time, and we'll look at some real world examples in just a moment. Uh, but the goal of a ramp is essentially to take an object from a low point and move it to a high point with relative ease. Uh, of course, that can be done in reverse as well, because it can make it easier to lower the height of an object or direct uh, change the direction of that object. Who knew that a ramp was an example of an inclined plane? I have a feeling some people in this chat knew that, Mr. Isaac. <laughs> That's why they're here. Uh, so what is an inclined plane? It is a simple machine that is used to spread out the force needed to move an object. And we can think about this. Uh, it would be much harder for me to pick up a box, a heavy box off a floor and load it into a very tall truck. But if I got a ramp, I even though I'm moving a greater distance as I walk up that ramp to the back of the truck, um, I am spreading out that force. So I'm not required to use all that force at once. And it makes that work easier. And here's an example of that. So they, they work by using a long surface to create a ramp where one side is higher than the other. And of course, objects can be moved up or down that ramp. Uh, moving an object gradually over a longer distance is easier than lifting it by hand. And this is exactly what I was mentioning. So here we see some of that vocabulary. The force is what's pushing that box, let's say, up the ramp. The load is the force of gravity, in this case, acting upon that object, uh, you know, giving it weight. Uh, and of course, we want it to get up the ramp. And this would be much easier than lifting it straight off the ground and trying to load it up onto a higher surface. Uh, and of course, sometimes it's nearly impossible because that higher surface is simply far too high. So, you know, you could jump all you want. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so let's talk about some examples. I wonder, you know, while we're doing this, and people are going to have to have some fast fingers, uh, what are some examples, you could throw them into the chat, of some inclined planes that you know or that you can think of right now? Just throw them in the chat. Go crazy. And I'll, I'll throw some examples up on the screen. A handicap ramp, absolutely, yeah. We, we love the notion of, of making using it to make people's lives easier, especially when there is a need for that. Right, roller coaster is a good one. Someone's been playing Minecraft. They know where this is going. Uh, so here are some examples. Uh, I really love the picture in this one of the uh, boat ramp uh, because my first thought was, wow, it gets it's so much easier to get the boat up out of the water. But then I thought about getting the boat in the water. You wouldn't want to just take the boat and drop it from ten feet up, <laughs> right? So gradually lowering it down that ramp is also making that job easier and and safer, if you will. I mean, I'm sure we have some students watching who would want to be in a boat that is just plummeting into the water, but not a good idea. That doesn't seem safe, Eric. No, no, <laughs> it doesn't. No. Wear a helmet. <laughs> or just, you know, don't do it. Don't try this at home. Uh, so stairs, for example, are one that doesn't come up often, uh, but they are, yeah, so, so someone did mention stairs, and I saw Mr. Isaac said, you know, agreed with that. They are a modified form of an inclined plane. So it's not a perfectly level or smooth ramp, per se, but it is still an inclined plane. It is a tool that allows us to walk from a lower level to a higher level. Again, if we had to climb or jump that, far more difficult. Right, so again, the goal is if we're gonna summarize it, um, we use them when we have to move something from a low level to a high level or vice versa, especially by hand. Here are some instances, of course, that would do that. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on that slide, but give you some examples of why we would want to do that. And then we can talk about things like slope. Uh, and rather than spend too much time on these slides, and by the way, all of these slides are available as a resource in the Flipgrid when you go to uh, the Flipgrid, which I will show you later, for your submission. So there's actually some slides I'm not sharing right now uh, because there were videos embedded and other information embedded, but I have made all of that available to you. So you can go ahead and check out those other videos. You can check out uh, this information because this is completely accessible to you uh, at any time, not just quickly here in this video. I know we're moving fast, but we got so much to cover today. Uh, but we can take a look at the example of slope and notice that if we were trying to move the ball on the left up that ramp, it would probably be much harder than it would be to move the ball on the right up the ramp. However, we do notice that to do that motion on the right, to move that ball up the ramp, we'd have to move it a greater distance, right? So the, the length of the ramp, um, 
you know, the hypotenuse of the triangle in this case, if we're going to get really technical and geometric, uh, is longer, but we're spreading that force out even further, making it easier to push. <laughs> Steve's getting compliments on the outfit. <laughs> so now it's time to build. I know this is the moment Steve has been waiting for, Mike's probably been waiting for. We want to dive right into Minecraft because odds are you're, you're fairly confident with either teaching or knowing about simple machines, but we wanted to ask ourselves, how can we do this in Minecraft? So that's what we're here to do. So let's dig in. Let's take a look at Minecraft and see how we can represent some of these things. Uh, and you all gave some great examples in the chat that we can utilize uh, of how we can represent uh, a simple machine like an inclined plane in Minecraft. So Steve, what do you got in mind? Well, I saw some great ideas in the chat, right? So I, I, you know, gosh, that helped. I think I think of roller coasters when I think Minecraft and inclined planes, quite honestly. And uh, Mike and I have a little history with building <laughs> roller coasters. <laughs> um, a little bit. You know, and I could see us maybe creating one that even goes over that whole Rube Goldberg Nasef sign. I don't know. We have that, that technology. Cool. Is have. there is there a letter that you could take it through? Oh yes, I'm a big fan um, of the roller coasters going through things. We could go through the U, the bottom yeah, of totally. the U. Let's go yeah, the U. Go. Start right here and go through the U. That would be that would qualify, they say, as an inclined plane, eh? Makes sense eh? to me. Eh? All right, let's let's. So now, Mike, how how, how should we start here? To should we, we should start. We should start by, uh, I actually missed getting the join code. So Eric needs to go to the private chat in, uh, the, in, in our streaming and give me the join code again. You got it. Um, but yeah, we're going to need, we're definitely going to need some rail and we're going to need some powered rail and some we redstone some torches. Or... We need rail. We need redstone. You following all this, Jennifer? <laughs> <laughs> This is Greek to me. Probably some, probably some redstone torches or some uh, blocks. redstone blocks, and and some block to put underneath it. Like as yeah, the, uh, I think we know what we like for the block. Hey, eh? hey, Mike. Um, should we go with a little quartz here? Little, little, little quartz. A little block of quartz, maybe. All right, I got my inventory pretty, pretty full here. Let's see. Kathy went and pointed out one of my favorite uh, inclined planes, and that is the log flume. Ah. Severe slope. <laughs> Mildly dangerous slope, but just dangerous enough. How about, actually, speaking of which, how about the um, alpine slide? Oh, are, are we getting into Action Park? You're pulling out <laughs> your New Jersey roots now. Yes, we are. I love Did it. Did anybody watch the... Um... It, it brought back childhood memories, Steve. Yes, it really for did. me too, for me too. All right, let's see here. We're going to start building down here. Oh, there's the logo. That's great. You know, I'm, while I'm you're working from the back, Mike, in case you hadn't noticed. While you are doing some fancy roller coaster stuff, I'm going to I'm going to make it pretty basic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's yeah, leave leave Steve and I and we'll we'll try to do I this. I figured let's, as much. Let's you know? show <laughs> let's show Eric we're gonna show Eric's screen and uh show him um uh incline planing. Yeah, te teach us some incline planing. Well, I wanted to focus on the notion of stairs, right? So we can model this. Uh I love the idea of modeling scientific concepts in Minecraft. It's 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 one of the things I really do love about uh, Minecraft and love the education edition for that same reason, of course. So here I've got a pillar with a height of five blocks, and here I've built a staircase with a height of five blocks. Uh, I'm going to put myself back on the ground, so I won't fly and cheat in this one as much as I'd love to fly and cheat. But if I go over here to this pillar of five blocks, and you know what, just to make this easier to visualize, uh, we're going to change my camera perspective so you can see me in third person there. And I'm going to attempt to jump up that five blocks, which is definitely not going to happen. The amount of force that my character, in this case, can can exert to, to move his body upward against gravity is not sufficient uh, to get up those five blocks. It's just not happening. However, I do have enough force if we build a staircase, which is, again, just a modified incline plane. I do have to travel a greater distance, but the force is now spread out 
and I can get straight to the top of that five blocks without issue, right? So modeling that scientific concept of the inclined plane. Now, how could we utilize this in a Rube Goldberg machine, right? The concept of just stairs. A roller co coaster sounds way better because I mean, that thing is automated and it's powered and it's a roller coaster. I mean, it's if you gave me the option of going to work on a roller coaster, going to work on stairs, I I'm gonna go on the roller coaster. Uh, but, uh, there are things we can do. So for example, you see the, the pig in the background is a mob and, and we can spawn mobs. We can spawn creatures in our game. And there are things that creatures are attracted to. There are things they run from like each other, depending on, right? So if we put a chicken down an ocelot is gonna chase that chicken or a wolf is gonna chase that chicken or a rabbit. Uh, but that could chase, for example, uh, that rabbit from the bottom of the stairs to the top of the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, maybe there's a pressure plate that triggers the next event to happen. Right, so if a wolf is here and a chicken spawns in front and it chases that chicken up the stairs, the chicken hits the button and the next thing happens. Uh, in the video, the sizzle reel provided by Jennifer, we saw that turtle moving the ping pong ball slowly across, uh, or we saw the hamster that walked across the lever, right? That then the ball rolled down when it tilted the lever over. Uh, all of those things, uh, <laughs> again, I'm reading comments. Yeah, my character is not doing any parkour yet, but again, we could add some parkour <laughs> elements to our Rob Goldberg machine. Uh, <laughs> and I've learned from the office that you have to yell parkour, parkour while you're parkour, doing parkour. Parkour, parkour. <laughs> Everyone do it in Minecraft, right? That's right. Uh, but there are definitely ways to utilize those stairs and we wanna get those, those juices flowing in your brain. So we're gonna provide some examples of these things, but maybe we're not gonna show you everything to do or every imaginable possibility because part of this challenge, of course, is to be creative. That, that's what these machines are about. They're truly about being creative. So how, how's our coaster going? I think it's coming okay. I think Mike just made an executive decision, which was good. Um, as, so, as, as, as Mike is known to do. No, <laughs> never. never. So, so I, I know you're probably also bothered by the fact that I went too wide and not like three wide. No, but dude, I, I, went, I went, well, okay. The problem yeah, was, no. the problem was I was trying to stay with our symmetry up here, you know, too, so. Yeah, I'm um, not even sure where you're all building. Oh my goodness, I just noticed. All right, Stretch so <laughs> now the interesting thing, let's see. So should we go down the, well, we'll figure it out. Pick a side. Pick yeah, a side pick for a side. the, pick for the Made thing. an executive decision. Did you? Nice. Because it'll curve around at the bottom then. All right, Eric, you can be cameraman for a little bit. I can absolutely do that. In fact, I'll, well, I'll go into uh, fancy camera mode here for you. Well, I'm, and sure uh, enough, we see. See, I was going to say, it looks like you've just got stairs, but now we're putting quite literally a 45 degree ramp now, on those stairs. Yeah, now, I, I'm, I'm playing a little physics thing here. On the If this is the side, I'm assuming this is the side we're going to come down. And I want to see if we will be able to... Um, we should be able to go down without needing the powered rail, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. One of the sides is going to need powered rail. Yeah, that'll be the and, other side. And the, and the flat space is going to need powered so, rail. So what you're saying yeah. is it takes more force to go up the ramp than it does to go down the ramp. Well, I, I, see, like I, see, what, so. I see what you're doing there, and I like it. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, so let me ask that next science question is, uh, why does it take more force to go up the ramp? What, what are you acting against? I'm just going to keep spitting really elementary science questions out here. You're acting against gravity. Jennifer is in the game. You're all, right. all losing to Jennifer right now. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, that is working. Okay. So do me a favor, guys. While, while you're doing this, uh, we probably have some viewers. You, you, you all have done some amazing sessions on Minecraft uh, that I have loved watching. I've been a part of a few of them. But but what parts are you using here and why? Because some of our Actually, are, want me to do. some of our competitors are probably very new to Minecraft. Okay, so we are we're building basically we're we're building that that ramp we just built with quartz. We're using rail and powered rail and redstone to um to power the the train it's the cart itself. Um, so right here we have and we'll probably switch to this. I think that's what Michael want to do. Um, we have basically in some form or other we need to be able to have a source of power going to any powered rail so we only have a few powered rails here because our goal is to truly leverage the use of the the uh the force and have the 
the rail cart come down without needing power. But on the other side, we're going to use more powered rails to make sure we get up the um, up the incline. Because that, you know, like if you're on a roller coaster, you might notice that those use um, they get you get pulled up the roller coaster because you can't really do you can't get up without some help. But but you also are going to get up easier in, with this incline plane than you would if you were uh, trying to climb up a tower without. You know, I don't think you could, you can't even really do a tower with uh, the rail carts or whatnot. Gotcha. So, uh, and yeah. I love where Kathy is going in the chat because she has brought a whole new scientific element into this, and that is energy oh, transformations. Uh, so if we got those teachers watching, this would also be a great way to introduce those concepts. Uh, pick one of the sides, Steve, and do, uh, and just replace the blocks like I'm doing here. But what are we'll you doing? Go up We'll go up. Um, we'll get, leave a five block gap so it looks good. So, wait. So, what are you saying? Because I'm on the other side now. Oh, you, did you just? Oh, you disappeared. Yeah, I'm on this side building the the up. Oh, the rail. Yeah. Here, we'll do it on this side. We'll do it on the side that you started on. I think I should be able to also do this, do our little trick like this, and use a redstone torch. Let's see where you are. So what is this redstone torch trick? Let's take a look. It's more of an aesthetic. Yeah, like you can you can totally <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, one. That so that that lights the redstone without needing to Yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed that when you put that torch under there, this piece of powered rail lit oh, up. I can do that here too. So anywhere I want to do that, it's like kind of like hiding it under here. So red, that's a redstone torch, though, not a regular torch. That right? is a redstone torch, it is. So how about, Mike, do you want to lay the... Um, yeah, that's what you're doing, right? <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I figured. We, we speak the same language. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't I keep all it. your secrets. Uh, well, we're, yeah, we're going to enter this in our contest later today, aren't we? This is, yeah, yeah. We can't, we can't like uh, tell everybody our, our, uh, our Rube Goldbergs. Or well, should we? I guess we're teaching, right? So we yeah, you are, you are a little bit. <laughs> oh, so you are doing it that way, so you don't care about the hidden. The hidden. I, I mean, you, you, we had talked about torches, so I put torches, oh, and, cool. and I have blocks, so you can see, oh, you can see that you can use blocks or torches. Either one works. Yep. yep. Um, just as as well. Um, one of the things that people should note, um, little hot tip, um for building is that um, powered rails do not work. If, if people, now by no means do you have to use rail carts to make a Rube Goldberg machine, even though they're going to be a very useful tool for you to make them. Um, the powered rail lines do not go around corners. Correct. Uh, so you have to, uh, you'll see everywhere where there's a corner, in our little um, our little uh, thing here, it's n it's a non-powered rail. Is that just won't work? So we might be able to test out our our incline I think, plane. I think we're pretty much ready. Yeah, yeah that was a quick one. So, oh, so, so you did add. I was trying to. I wanted to not have them on this side to see if it would make it down without power. Uh, but um, yeah, right. no, it to it totally would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like you can if we we break them. Yeah. All right. So now we need a rail cart. Right. So now someone mentioned this... that changes in energy would would definitely be more severe if they were crashing into something. So maybe we want our rail cart to eventually crash into something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And oh, maybe. Oh gosh. I think at some point today, maybe we need to use a detector rail and and some TNT or something. I don't know. Ooh. Uh, maybe one with a chest and a hopper. Yeah. Anybody have a Hello Kitty um, lying around? Or... Um, let's We've see. got motion. I'm, try I'm trying to track you with the camera as we go here. Ready? Here we go. And oops, I'm going the wrong way. But then it's good that Mike did the other thing because here we go. Oh, no. Something's wrong over here. Uh oh. Let's see. Uh -huh. Come on. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh I went through you. Almost. You did. We are missing a... Now you crashed. 
Yeah, because Something is missing, right? we need a thingy here. Now try. Oop. Oopsie. Kathy is asking, why do you have redstone blocks next to and under the powered rail? Uh, we don't For have aesthetics, to. Teddy. Oh, was uh, it aesthetic? <laughs> was that aesthetic, or was that? Uh, it was. No, it was absolutely aesthetic. If Mike did it for aesthetics. Don't sure. let me. Don't let me. But it, change that. but it can be either or. I think is what. Yeah, and it to could also have here, right? been. It could have been just a torch, and it could have been. Yeah, we were showing just a few ways, I guess. Here we go. That'll work better. Oh, ooh, I went through the rail card. That's fancy too. Here we but go. But you are going up go, now. Go, go, go. We can see where Notice. those pushes are taking place. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Whoa! Body oh, camera work on my part. Oof. Oh, that's right. Well, I'm just... Ah! Uh, there's that crash. There's that oh, crash. There we go. But the crash... Ooh, there are a lot of crashes it. now where we've spawned too many mine So guards. we found a spot where... <laughs> boof. Let's see. I think this way we're missing... Oh, no, it worked that time. Oh, no, it doesn't. So there you go. That's interesting. Didn't quite make it. All right. Whew. So... I think, I think you'll be fine now. I got rid of all of the rail cards. Oh, okay. Let's see. Oof, oof, oof. Go oh, up, yeah. Up, no up, problem. Up. That's beautiful. Whoa. Up. And yeah. down we go. Yeah, perfect. Nailed it. We we won. We won. We win the world. We we win the Rube Goldberg in plane <laughs> contest. Dan, what do you think? Did they win? I, My I, stairs were pretty good. I'm so amazed but, at this. It's it's incredible. So <laughs> E Bob. 2002 asked, is the first goal to just demonstrate the use of an inclined plane in general with Minecraft or to somehow put it with the... Okay, great question. So here you go. So definitely each weekly challenge is going to be simply to incorporate or demonstrate or prototype the simple machine that we're working on that week in Minecraft. So fairly simple. We want to scaffold the learning for all you educators out there. And we're going to start with learning the different simple machines and trying to find ways, creative ways to use them in Minecraft. As you move forward, we would love nothing more than for you to build on each week. But it's not a requirement in the initial stages because we want everybody to feel comfortable joining at any time and participating in any of the individual mini challenges. Okay. So for the next 12 weeks, essentially, every other week, we're having one of these streams and launching a contest for that particular simple machine. Eric's going to shortly show you how to submit them once you're registered on the Flipgrid site. Um, and then that's how that will work. Then in January, when Jennifer and her team announced the official digital challenge in Minecraft, that's when it becomes an effort to create a full-on Rube Goldberg machine that hopefully incorporates a number, maybe all simple machines, in order to complete the task that you'll be given. So in other words, just like any Rube Goldberg machine would do, it's going to be a whimsical, um, overly complex, uh, you know, engineered machine to solve a simple task. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And yeah, what I also want to point out. What's uh, that? Oh, we'll go through that, I think. But uh, I wanted to point out real quick, Steve, uh, the way that these mini challenges work, because mm -hmm. I want to make sure we understand the difference between this and the overall challenge that will be happening starting, I believe, in January. Uh, but we're running these little mini sessions every two weeks from now till December. And the way yes. that these work is... If you submit, and as long as your team's submission or your individual submission meets the criteria, meaning, for the example this week, you're demonstrating an inclined plane in Minecraft. And we want them to be fantastical. We want them to be whimsical. There is um, you know, some basic rubric stuff that we've attached. Uh, but as long as it meets the criteria, then you get entered into a raffle drawing that we will announce in next week's session. Yes. What we will also do, hopefully, each week is show a few that really stand out to us. So, so you know, that's that you, you know the the possibility of being featured on this live stream. Could you imagine? 
That's right. Could there be well, anything there better? The, the, the clip for Goonies, I think there was a little blip of the clip for Goonies in that sizzle reel, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Uh, the famous and I think notoriety. the breakfast machine from Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure was in there. And of course, OK Go had the music and a bunch of clips throughout there. And I love that music video. If they don't know the full music video for uh, OK Go's uh, This Too Shall Pass, so good. Uh, that is how I would introduce this to students every single year. Perhaps we even close out the show today with that. Oh, that would it's be a possibility. All right, so what do you say we uh, we try and submit this roller coaster to uh, our flip grid? Let's do it. All right, so of course, first things first is you do have to go to the NACEF website, which Steve provided up way above in the chat, but I'm sure he can do that again, um, and register your team. That registration will open today. If you are in a rush and you don't have time to register today, there is a pre-registration link that's been there for a while. If you fill that out, you'll get an email when everything's up and running and you'll be included in the loop. So either way, either fill out the pre-registration or the full registration when it goes live later today. Uh, and once you've done that, when these mini challenges go live, like this one is going live today, you will get an email providing you with the directions to submit your challenges to the Flipgrid, as well as the link to the Flipgrid. So let's take a look at the Flipgrid. So I am going to bring this guy over here. And here is the Flipgrid. Now, we've got a landing page for the Flipgrid, which is what you're looking at right now. Uh, you see some cool people's names up here. Kathy, I see your name up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this gives some basic examples and directions about our, our uh, competition, uh, as well as that really fantastic uh, image uh, that Jennifer's team provided, uh, which I absolutely love. But Can as I of project? today, Can I oh, go ahead. Effect? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, those illustrations were done by Ed Steckley. Uh, and he is the illustrator of, the, of our our picture books. So if you uh, would like to bring images or the idea of, you know, Rube Goldberg machines into the classroom, um, his book is just wonderful. I will say that. So it's, it's, you can find it on our website. We'll, we'll definitely have to show the books off in some of the coming sessions. We'll definitely do that. Yeah. Cause the, I love, absolutely adore the illustrations. They're so good. Um, but you'll notice over here at the top, it says view two topics. Now this is the first topic, of course. Uh, but if I click this little down arrow over here, I can click the, the two topics. You'll notice that one of our challenges has now gone live and it is this challenge right here. So I'm gonna click on challenge one inclined plane. And that brings up this week's challenge. Uh, and this one actually will stay live, I believe through next uh, Friday. So you actually have, I believe nine, 10 days, give or take uh, to submit these. So they are due next Friday. What you will notice is it gives a brief explanation of what you need to do with the deadline date. Um, and again, no mods permitted. We do allow them to do this in any version of Minecraft, but we know that some of those versions like J the Java edition do allow for mods. We're asking you not to use mods. Uh, please know that Mike, myself, Steve are pretty familiar with those. So we will spot a mod when we see it. <laughs> uh, so be mindful uh, and, and follow those guidelines, you know. Uh, but you'll notice, of course, it says Incline Plane PowerPoint right here. That is the PowerPoint that I shared earlier. Oh, that registration may not be live yet. I saw that in the chat right there. So don't worry about that just yet. Uh, but we are going to record a response. So there's two places to do that. There, Flipgrid has kind of changed this process if you haven't used it in a bit. It used to be a big green plus sign. Uh, you now see this record a response button here and a big red camera button here. We can click either of those. So I'm going to click the big one because it's big. And it's telling me that I have five minutes to record uh, my submission because that's we have a lot of these to judge. So five, we're <laughs> asking you to keep it within five minutes. For the final challenge, we're going to make that a little bit longer. For these many ones, five minutes is plenty. Uh, but what we want to show you in Flipgrid is I could click this and just record myself talking, but you wouldn't see any of the Minecraft stuff that we did. Uh, Flipgrid has some amazing new features. If you click these three dots over here where it says options, click the little ellipses you can see that one of those options is to screen record. And we don't need to install any additional software or anything to screen record. We can do it right in Flipgrid. So I'm gonna click screen record. It's gonna to say to capture my screen. I am going to start screen recording. I'll choose screen one. 
and it's going to give me a countdown. Three, two, one. I'm going to come back here, and I can actually talk over this. And you'll see my little camera in the corner because it's recording me as well as the submission. So here is our cool inclined plane roller coaster that we built. Uh, using this inclined plane makes it a whole lot easier to go up this great height. And of course, roller co coasters, uh, admittedly, are a lot more fun than stairs. I, I admit it. I give up. My stairs were not that cool. Uh, and then maybe we could demonstrate riding the roller coaster if we wanted to. Or, for oh, example, yes. I'm filming these Definitely. folks. Right? I'm filming these folks going up it. So maybe you could have one of your uh, partners on your team kind of modeling it while you film them, like I would do right now. By the way, all the things I'm saying are getting recorded by Flipgrid, and that's OK. Well, you hopped off that one mid-motion. That's what I they did. tell you not to do at that the theme not a good park. Idea. Let's see what happens when I oop. <laughs> oop. Oop. Are you trying to walk down it? Uh, yeah, now good I luck need with that. no I helmet need, or nothing. I, I need an alpine slide, or I can wait. I wonder if I can get on it when it comes back. That's right. All right, so I'm going to now go back to uh, that Flipgrid page, and I'm going to click Stop Recording. I can now review it, and I can hear my voice. You don't want to hear me talk over myself, but everything I just said is recorded along with this video. I can crop this. I can add more footage since I still have almost four minutes, but I won't do that. Uh, when I feel like I like it the way it is, I can click Next. It's going to ask me to take a selfie. This is very important. Uh, if you want us to share your video um, and publish your video on the Flipgrid, then you want to, if you're a student, uh, you want to not reveal your identity right here. Uh, so when you take your selfie, you actually have some options. So hide your identity, right? I don't want to just take it on my face. I could, of course, just lean out of the camera and hit the button, and that's fine. Um, I could uh, add effects, right, like filters. There's a cool pixel art filter, right? That definitely hides it. It looks like I'm on an episode of CSI right now. Minecraft. Um, <laughs> CSI Minecraft. <laughs> All right. Uh, the other filters are color filters. Oh, there's a Lego filter now. Oh, that's new. I like that one. We like things that are made out of blocks. <laughs> There you go. That's yeah. It also makes my hair look darker. I like this one. I'm hmm. going to use this Lego filter. Uh, there's also stickers, and you could put those stickers over your face. A lot of your students are probably already familiar with Minecraft. Uh, I'm sorry, with Flipgrid, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I'm going to snap that photo. I look good. That's the best <laughs> I've ever looked. I'll click that Next button. It's uploading my video. It's going to ask me for a display name. By default, it should put my first name and last initial. That is fine. We can leave it that way. Um, what our recommendation is to you, however, is that either in the display name or in the title, you include your team name that you used when you registered. So whether that's your school name or if you use a team name, uh, you utilize that when you do that. So uh, you want your team name in there. So what's our team name, guys? The Roller Coaster Tycoons. I see what you did there. I like it. I think I spelled that right, except for roller coaster. I know it's two word, but I don't care. I'm leaving it because I like it better this way. And I'm going to submit. And success, mission accomplished. Uh, the submission is done. So that is complete. Um, you won't see it here because we are moderating these, of course, because we don't want to reveal any student identity and things like that. And by the way, that's true of that little camera you saw in the photo in the corner. You can hide that. You can turn that off. You could put a filter over your face. Uh, you are welcome to keep those on, but know that it'll be harder for us to share your work uh, if that's the case. Um, unless, of course, when your team did go through the registration process that you uh, sign off on the media release, which I know is part of that process. So it should not be an issue. All right, and that's it. That's the whole process for submitting via Flipgrid. So um, to answer a lot of the questions, too, about registration, which I, I'm so glad you're all so excited to register, if you go on the NACEF page, at the bottom, if you just fill in your first name, last name, organization, et cetera, with your email address, you will get notified um, with the registration link also. So that should serve as a reminder. The registration link is supposed to go live. I believe it's supposed to go live right after our show today. But uh, just in case, I think having you know that pre-registration would not be a bad idea. I, I would do that regardless because it will definitely make sure you are on the email list and that you're getting all the contact information. Right. And uh, and hopefully it will, you'll also get reminders then about each of these uh, biweekly or bi-monthly, whatever you call the every other week thing. 
um, for our, our live sessions. Fantastic. Uh, there was an idea to, 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 to sing us out or, or play us out with okay. Yes. Go. And I, 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 yes. I can, I can do that. I, I have yeah. that. I have that technology. You have the technology do that. And then we'll stay here. And if people have questions to drop in the chat, we are still here. Yeah. That's so right. you'll have, uh, you'll have some time to ask a couple questions. Uh, we'll, we'll play the video and that'll be the end for us. So thanks everybody for watching, uh, for joining us for the first stream, please come back. Two weeks, same time, same channel. Um, um, just two weeks from now, come and join us again, and we'll. Uh, what What's our topic next week? I I don't have the schedule right in front of I me. I almost want to keep it a surprise. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you just you just don't know off that, the top of your head. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. I I believe. Uh, Pol let me double police? check for you. Someone said pulleys. Uh oh, pulleys. It might be chat. pulleys. Is, I think. Is, we would think. Does chat police. know? We went with well, it's easy. on the site, so I believe police is next. Yes. <laughs> we went with the easy one for Minecraft first. We're going to have to think oh, a little boy. bit here. We're going to need Mike <laughs> to engineer some cool stuff in Minecraft. I love I how it idea. all falls on me. I have an idea for police, but... Yes, yeah, so and if you want to do like an odds and statistics lesson with your students, uh, since there are five simple machines remaining, you could have basically said, what are the odds that I pick the right one just by guessing? <laughs> Because Richard said there are only so many machines. Right. To get a 20% chance, I guess. That's it. That's it. All right. So for Eric and Steve and Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we will see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. And remember to submit an awesome project between now and then. Maybe I should sing it. Nobody wants me to sing it. If anything, I would narrate it. There's a TV.